today my guest on the Homegrown Business Show is Enza Goodbar. She is a personal development coach, motivational speaker, and best-selling author author she uses her coaching and speaking and writing to inspire and empower and challenge clients to transform their lives from the inside out so Anza likes to work with successful passionate people who are committed to living out their dreams and can't pinpoint what's holding them back so her passion is all about empowering you to design the best life possible for yourself to live a life of love unconditionally, believing that you're worthy and asking for what you want in life and relationships. So Anza, welcome to the show today. Thank you so much for having me. It's our pleasure. So Anza, the show is about business, but it's about your journey. So how did you get started in this space of coaching and personal development? If you'd like to share that with us. Absolutely. Well, let me just go back a little bit and say that I grew up in an entrepreneurial family. And so I have always had a heart for entrepreneurs. I started my first business in 2004. I owned a brick and mortar mortgage company. And in 2008, I'm sure everybody remembers the crash of the mortgage industry here in the US. And I lost everything. Uh, when that happened, it was like, oh, what's next, you know? And so I had uh, come across a person who was a virtual assistant when I had my mortgage company. And she said, you need to hire a virtual assistant. And I was like, that is the craziest idea I've ever heard of. I need someone in my office who can greet my customers. I don't need them sitting at home doing something. And, you know, it's amazing when life takes a turn, how your perspective can change. And so I thought, you know, I could work with other mortgage companies. I could process loans. I, before that, I I had been a professional event planner for a dozen years, and I thought, you know, I could work remotely for event planning companies, insurance companies, finance companies, you know, who are, you know, needing to do events. Well, none of that happened. I was attracting startup entrepreneurs into my business. So while I say I had a virtual assistant business, it was really a lot of informal coaching, and, you know, take this back almost 10, 12 years now, coaching wasn't a thing. It wasn't an industry yet. And so I did a lot of consulting, guiding entrepreneurs into setting up systems and, you know, helping them set up business plans because many people were like, I don't know what to do. Well, over the course of 10 years, I started attracting coaches into my business. And coaches had the same kind of needs of setting up business plans, um, having systems in place, having the right structure for their sales. But you know, the thing that I found to be true over that course of time was that it didn't matter if you had the right systems in place. It didn't matter if you had a business plan. If you didn't love yourself and if you didn't believe in yourself, you would have upper limit issues and you would not be able to move forward. So for instance, if a woman didn't feel comfortable in her physical appearance, she was not going to hop on and do a Facebook Live and be in front of an audience to expand her business. She was going to be a shrinking violet. And so um, at first I thought when I went into the coaching space officially a couple of years ago, I thought, you know, I'm going to be a business coach. I'm going to teach business and leadership. That's what I know. That's what I'm good at. And it wasn't where my heart was. It wasn't where my passion was. And it was like, you know, there are all these women out there who are trying to grow their business, but they're having issues of worthiness. Um, they're having confidence issues. And it's like, we need to get at the root of what the problem is and be able to face that and figure out what that is. And once you're able to show a woman that aha moment and she learns to embrace all of her uh, you know any shame in her story from before any embarrassment any failures you know body image issues all of a sudden she feels empowered to stand up and receive the things that she wasn't willing to allow herself to receive before which could be money it could be success it could be love you know everybody has their own little stuck point but being able to take it back to the heart of the matter and for me it's self-love um, I really believe that self-love is the middle of our universe and if you were to imagine a rectangle, 
put self-love in the middle and draw a line across. Everything above that line is abundance and growth. You know, those might be words like momentum. They might be words like love, confidence. Um, words below the line are going to bring you into a limited mindset, a scarcity mindset. That might be feelings of frustration, uh, lack of momentum. Um, it could be doubt, just overall feeling stuck. It could be signs of depression or anxiety. And so I always tell people, you know, write down how you're feeling about your business. Where are you at in your life? What kind of words come to mind? And then we can decide, are you playing above the line or below the line and be able to create a plan to spend more life above the line than below the line. Perfect. Perfect. So you've been doing this now for eight years, but you've finally found the niche that you're exactly. wanting to work with. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And that's really interesting because um, I know from my own experience and, and my own clients as well that we set out because it's really important and I, and I train this as well that we understand our target market. But sometimes mm. we have our target market set, but we attract completely the opposite. Exactly. That's so true. And then that's okay too because being in business, you have now identified where you fit into the market or what part of the marketplace you want to work with and then you have a clear indication of who your target market is. Isn't that so true? That mm. is so true. And you know, as I have been going along and talking um, this message of self-love, men are starting to gravitate into my world. And it's interesting that men have a lot of the same soft self-confidence issues. There was a gentleman I was talking to who was a new coach and he um, – was saying, you know, he didn't mind spending half a million dollars on a home. He didn't mind spending $50,000 on a truck. But when it came to charging for his own personal services, he couldn't even ask for $25 an hour. He's like, I couldn't do it. I can't do it. Mm -hmm. You know, I, you know, selling me is very different than selling product A, B, C, or D, you know, yeah. and being able to help people wrap their mind around the value that they bring and how their unique story can reach a segment of the population that nobody else can. That's exactly That's, right. It's, yeah. It's really fun to help people have those aha moments and discover that unique thing that makes them so magical in the world. Mm, absolutely. Awesome. Thank you so much for sharing that story with us. I mean, you're a woman of my own heart. When I was listening to you, I was actually mortgage brokerage in 2004 to 2008. And then I okay. sold my business. We were a little bit fortunate out here in Australia that that ripple effect the GFC didn't actually hit until about 2010-ish. Um, okay. Yeah, and then went into personal development. So there you go. <laughs> there you go. I know. Awesome. Yes. So right. share, share with me. I know um, 2018 is finishing, but 2019, what's one of your biggest goals that you would love to achieve or I know you will achieve next year in your business? Mm. Well, I am super excited. 2018 was probably my most exciting year of growth personally and in my business. But next year, uh, one of the segments that I work on with people is creating empowerment from the boardroom to the bedroom and helping women stand up for what they want in all aspects of their life. And one of those areas is the bedroom and working with women who are empty nesters, um, feeling disconnected from their spouse, wanting to rekindle that love, that intimacy. I am going to be launching couples retreats next year and I can't wait uh, to be able to bring five couples at a time and do some deep dive into rebuilding intimacy and you know so many people are like oh no she's selling sex stuff and it's like you know intimacy isn't about sex no. it's about communication it's about ha having that foundation it's about reconnecting and sharing and opening up and being vulnerable with your partner and for women who are you know between 45 and 54 we weren't brought up that way mm -hmm. um, you know we focus on our family we didn't necessarily focus on our our spouse while we were raising children and now we're at this transitional point in our lives and so I'm I'm 
looking forward to helping women reconnect the dots in their relationship and be able to recreate that honeymoon feeling that they had when they got married 25, 30 years ago and be able to deepen their relationships. That's so, awesome. That is such a need yeah. in the market as well. And how beautiful to be able to show people how to or create a space, isn't it? It's about creating mm -hmm. a space to allow them to nurture that relationship. And mm -hmm. I remember a coach once said once said to me that intimacy was in in our definition into me you see. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So I love it. It's not about intimacy, it's about into you. Yeah. Yes. yeah. yes. Yes. Nice. And you're creating that. Yeah. I'm super excited. It's going to be a lot of fun. I'm taking a group of mastermind women through the uh, initial steps, if you will, of creating that. So I've got nine women who are going through a program with me next year to get to know themselves better, be able to gain clarity into what they want in their relationships moving forward and then starting the building box of increasing Beautiful. the level of intimacy. So it's going to be a fabulous year. <laughs> well, that's awesome that you're doing that because we, we need it. We do. <laughs> we do. We do. And, you know, the more we do in community, the faster we grow. And I just love helping, you know, be that catalyst in people's lives. Yeah. Help them live their best life. You know, Absolutely. that's what it's all about for all of us. That's for sure. So, yeah. and so just to go back to business for a little bit. So I, I know, and, and my son who's, you know, really successful in business always says this, that, you know, when you're starting and you were, you attracted startups. So that was your core. So I'm really keen to ask this question. Um, so we, we often say my son and I that, you know, there are millions of programs out there um, and courses and information available for business owners to go from, you know, I'll take you from zero to a million dollars in a year or, you know, in six months you'll generate 150000 or whatever. And we both know that being in business, um, mm -hmm. it's really not going to happen unless you've got a bucket load of money behind you to market that product today. Mm -hmm. So I always like to ask the question. So my son says the hardest is the first $10,000. You know, so can you sort of take your mind back to that space where you've started your new business, you needed to make money and and that little bit of a journey of making that first 10000 because really once you've done that, everything else catalysts, about, you know, goes with systems as you, you know, um, on its merry way. Um, so, yeah, can you share that or even your own business insights or your clients' insights? Mm-hmm. So the first thing that I would say is you're absolutely right. People who are out there building, you know, selling their system of do these three things and you're going to make X million dollars or hundreds of thousands of dollars in weeks or months. It just, I'm not going to say it doesn't happen, but it happens to a very, very few people. Mm -hmm. And so really the key is you need to show up daily. You need to be consistent in what you're doing. You need to look at your business as a marathon and not a sprint. Yeah. And, you know, the thing is, you can listen to everybody out there. But what you need to do is be in alignment with your core values. If you are marketing with yourself within your core values, you are going to attract the people into your business that you want to work with and who need to work with you. Yeah. And I think that was the biggest thing. Um, my biggest struggle when I first started out was trying everybody's system. You know, oh, you need to do X, Y, Z. And, you know, in my generation social media wasn't a thing and so marketing on social media is not my strong suit I do it because it needs to be a part of my marketing plan but mm -hmm. for me it's relationship building and it goes back to my mortgage days you know that handshake that look in the eye that you know this is who I am Again, going back into the intimacy topic, when they can look into my eyes and see what I'm all about, that's what closes a sale for me. It isn't an email marketing campaign. It isn't a Facebook ad. It isn't social media posts. That might bring people into my net or my funnel, but it's talking to people and sitting down, either video or face-to-face -face ideally, that really makes it happen. And so I think you really 
really need to understand how you're wired and how you work best to define the marketing program that's going to work best for you. And if you're authentic and you're genuine, those sales are going to happen. If mm. you're feeling, and I used to tell my mortgage brokers this all the time, if you're feeling desperate and you're feeling scarcity, you are going to be projecting that and people are going mm. to resist closing with you. And so regardless of where you are, you need to have an abundance mindset and you have to know that the right people are going to show up at the right time because there's nothing worse than trying to fit a square peg in a round hole. You don't no. want to work with someone who's not your ideal client. It's not helping you in the long run, and it's not helping them either. And you're going to end up getting bad reviews, and you're not going to get referrals. And, you know, again, I'm kind of old school. My business has been built on referrals. Every business I've owned has been built that way. And you know, that doesn't happen with online marketing no. as a whole it comes from relationship building when you work with people one by one so don't get caught up in the money and how fast you can make them the money think about how you can serve people and help meet their needs and if that's what your focus is the sales will happen beautifully organic. said yeah yeah I have to agree with you, you know, just because we're moving into a world of online doesn't mean that we have to um, forget the authenticity, the soul, and, you know, the reason that we are in business for. And I love the takeaway for me from that was the fact that we had to show up every day. So, mm -hmm. and again, it comes back to that inner work. Who am I today and yes. how will I portray myself to the world? Mm -hmm. That's exactly right. And it really goes back to personal development and who you believe you are and what you believe you're worthy to receive. And, you know, one of my clients, we worked on a money mindset. When I first started working with her, she couldn't raise her rates. She was living a life of scarcity and she couldn't figure out why. And she knew that she brought a lot of value to her customers. And as we dug deeper, she realized that there was a conversation that she had with her mom back when she was like seven or eight that stuck with her and it made her believe that she would always live a life struggling financially. She thought that's all that she deserved and she was going to work hard and ends were never going to meet. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we did a lot of work. She went back, she healed that relationship. She had a conversation about that re uh, conversation with her mom. And since we started working together, she has raised her rates six times mm -hmm. you know because she believes in herself she believes in the value and her clients never balk at it they're yeah. like absolutely I'll pay that because you're giving me the results that I need in my business exactly. and so we have to be able to believe that we're worthy um, to receive the things that we so want in our life and if we don't feel that we're that we're worthy we really need to do that inner work and figure out why what's yeah. that stuck what is the root of that limiting belief that we have because it shows up in how we appear it shows up in the words that we say it shows up in our posture in our dress in our vocabulary and subconsciously people pick up on that absolutely you know? I, I another quote that it was told by the same business um, coach way back when I first started that he shared with me was if you want to know who you really are like on a personal development level than venture into business because the minute you start as you said doing the systems or whatever the truth the true reflection will appear and that's when you've got to really work on yourself <laughs> it is so true you learn so much about yourself I was watching a, a program this weekend called alone and the premise of the the show is that they take 10 people and they put them in a secluded place and they make a commitment for staying for a year but in in season one they made it oh I don't know 45 50 days or something in the wilderness by themselves and it was interesting because uh, the winner would win five hundred thousand dollars and so everybody went in there like this is life-changing money and I'm gonna do this I'm gonna do this and the longer they were alone the more important relationship and connection and love was the less important all of the money became and it was really fascinating to watch the psychology of that and 
I found the parallels in our business um, these days. So many entrepreneurs are solopreneurs. They're trying to do it by themselves. They're burning the candle at both ends and they're failing mm. and they don't know why they're failing. And so being able to plug into a community to get the support and encouragement that you need to know that you're not in this journey alone, even though you might be in business by yourself, there are other people who have walked that path before you or who are walking a similar path right now. And it's really important to be able to plug into that energy and that support system. Them mm. and not feel like you have to do it all by yourself because there are create creative ways to get help you absolutely know? so absolutely. many creative ways that don't cost a ton of money you exactly. know exactly exactly awesome okay so thank you so much um is there anything that you would like to share today like a product or do you have um you know do you have a show on facebook or anything and so people can actually tap in and have you support them um in in their business and their and women that are looking to you know tap back into that intimacy Sure. Um, I am offering free love breakthrough calls. If someone would like to get on a call, um, we spend 45 minutes. We kind of get down and dirty into where's your stuck point? How can I help you get on the right track? Sometimes it's a matter of creating a, uh, a morning routine that sets you up for success. Sometimes it's, you know, looking at a particular issue and getting them the resources that they need. It might be making a referral. It might be some books. And it might be that they want to work with me one-on-one, -on -one, which is always a blessing. But I don't go into those calls expecting that. I really want to help people, especially this time of year, get off on the right foot going into the new year. How can they get on stuck and be more successful next year? I also have a Facebook group called Bodacious Boss Babes. And it's a group of women that are really on the quest to love them themselves more and feel empowered from the boardroom to the bedroom and it's a, a great place where we just share whatever's on our mind we talk a lot about self-love self-care we talk about things that bring pleasure to our lives um, you know and everybody again thinks oh no it's all about sex mm -hmm. but pleasure comes in so many different ways yeah. and I live a life where I don't do anything that doesn't bring me pleasure and so in my business if there's things that don't bring me pleasure those are things that I delegate to my VA I hate doing techie stuff it it is awful for me it sucks the energy out of me mm. so those are things that I delegate you know having order having everything in its place clean closets bring me so much pleasure so I enjoy doing those kinds of things so we talk about being able to look at our lives from a different perspective if you will to create yeah. a life that we love so you know some things we do because we think that we're supposed to or they're expected of us and sometimes those are rules that we've made up ourselves and so just being able to identify what do we want in life what makes us the happiest because when we're happy in our personal life that translates into our business life I believe it's all intrinsically connected absolutely so, yeah, <laughs> absolutely yeah. awesome Enza so so I will make sure that those links to your group and um, the 45 minute call are available for everybody to get in contact with you. Um, it's been an absolute pleasure today to chat with you I think it's so important as you said that people can you know tap in and understand that you know what I'm in the startup stage or even if I am transitioning into life that there is so much available for us and more importantly that we are not alone exactly exactly so I, I'm blessed to be able to chat with you today and have you share those insights with everybody that's going to listen to this show around the world. So thank you so much for joining me. Oh, thank you for having me, Leanne. It's been a huge pleasure. My pleasure. Bye. <laughs> Bye.